Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the old channel. We're back at it here. I just pulled the uh, recoil starter off this 25 Johnson and uh, kind of blew out the uh, lower cowl. And then I'm going to put a little bit of paint to glue down the uh, foam inside the bonnet here and then I'm gonna run it out to the float plane um, a little float plane dock that we got where all the charter planes fly out of here and get it back out to the bush to the owner he called via satellite this phone this morning say I need my Johnson I need my Johnson cuz my Honda went <laughs> that's what he said he said my Honda went <laughs> and he goes I need that Johnson so um, I pulled off, the, I, I let that recoil soak overnight in my yummy, yummy tank, and now we got this. Isn't that a little better? So, got that. I'm going to put some Never Seize on the bolts, get it back together, give it one more start, I think. Um, there she is. Before I get started on this, I want to give a shout out to uh, Ron the Gun Guy over across the pond in Denmark. Now what I need to know, Ron, is do you live in one of them pretty little castles they got over there? I want a castle. Well, I guess I'll call this place my castle. It'll have to do. But, there you go, Ron. Big shout out to you over across the pond, and thanks for tuning in. Let's get on this thing. Like I said, I already blew most of it. You see, I got the rag. bit some more and just get on that linkage and everything and get this guy zip back in there but first I'm gonna splather slather smather these Remember, there's two long ones and one short one. Long, short, long. See? There you can see the difference in sizes. Long, long, short. So, get the nantesis on there. Because they were rather difficult to get out. You think? Need to take the socket with me. Where you at now? Uh, a little more. I hate when that happens. Come on, you. It's gonna be difficult. It's gonna be difficult. There you go. Um. So we got that thing. We got cowling blown out. We got things cleaned up in the pan a little. Let's give her a choke. That ain't no joke with a, a choke. Um, did I squeeze the bulb? I can't remember. I can't remember. I did. 
All right, so we got that. Let me turn on the sucker. See what she do. Let me get this cowling real quick. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is anywhere this cowling is coming up, I'm going to slice it with a razor blade. Like so. Anywhere I see it peeling up, I'm just going to get rid of it. Like a soul. That looks a little better. Oops. And I'm going to give it the wire brush. Little wire brush treatment. Give it a little bit of, sorry about that. Then, I'm gonna take the rattle can paint. I happen to choose a glass charcoal gray. And glue that stuff down. Glue it down. Not going for pretty here, I'm going for functionality. We just want to get a coat on this to glue everything. In fact, I have used 7mm glue instead of paint, but I found paint is something I always have around. I should do now we're gonna get let that dry for a little bit and that should glue anything down that wants to get sucked up into the old kava rapa and then we'll run it out to the seaplane dock I'll be back
So, this customer, he uh, sends this 25 Johnson in from the bush, and uh, well, you could you could see the overall condition of the outboard. It was uh, transom clamps completely welded stuck broke off the recoil starter wouldn't retract or anything so it was roached full of salt and everything so I soaked that overnight in my tank and worked it worked it worked it a few times and got it lubed up and then I put a bunch of lube in there and let it soak for about 15 minutes she preed up and started pulling good so this guy's out in the middle of nowhere, on the back side of Kodiak Island somewhere. I just got that engine like three days ago. And keep in mind, this time of year, it starts to get pretty busy at my little shop. Um, once those fish start running, um, and even though the salmon and everything haven't hit the the freshwater rivers just yet they're out there in that bay and these guys are getting them so he sends this thing in three days ago and uh, then this morning he starts calling me via satellite phone and I don't know a lot about that but I imagine that ain't cheap but anyway so he calls me via satellite phone I didn't recognize the number, so it went to the answer machine, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, yeah, this is me, you know, and my, my 25 Johnson, my Honda, quit running, and, and uh, man, I need that outboard, and I, I need it now. I need, that, I need that Johnson back out here. Okay, yep. Okay, yep. Uh, you're saying he's calling from the satellite phone. Yeah. Did he, does he know that you wanted to do more to it? Or like, was it no, scratchy, well, bad connection? You didn't get the message across? To what right, I mean? no, I wasn't there. I got it on my answer okay. machine. Well, the reason I asked, we'll take this bill, make sure he knows about it, and then we can add it in the email, because yeah. he emails quite a bit. Okay, well, emailing. it's going to run fine for him. Yeah. He, he said he had a Honda and it died. Yeah. And he said he needs that one really bad. Every dog got to have a cookie. Got to give the doogie the cookie. Hand, there you go. You're a smart doogie. <laughs> I love that look they give you. Give me more cookies. You want more cookies? Yeah. I just take it for granted, you know. I live here on Kodiak. And, uh... I try not to, you know, it, for those guys right there, and, you know, and I'm, I'm just throwing this out, I don't know this, but, uh, coming up here, and when I, you know, who knows where they're from, they could be from Denmark, 
they could be from Australia, who knows? They could be from Idaho, they could be from Florida. New York City, they could be. But uh, this could be the, the, you know, the trip of a lifetime for them, you know? And I live here every day. And, uh, you know, days like the day when the weather looks like that. And it's pee and rain and stuff, you know, it's easy to go, boy, I wish I lived in uh, San Diego. But, you know, like I said, I try and keep it in perspective, you know. This could be a, a, a literally a trip of, the, of a lifetime for those gentlemen there. So, yeah. Such a beautiful place. Try not to. And, you know, the people here. Just good people. You know, those pilots right there, I've known them. Like I said, Jay there used to be, the guy in the 206 used to be my neighbor. And Roland, he was the second float plane I flew out with on a hunt here on the island. And that was 39 plus years ago or something like that. Easy to take for granted. Okay, I gotta say bye bye now, okay? Say bye bye. Nice set of Suzuki controls laying here on the ground. Cables, wire connectors. Then we got some yammy snatches. Nice lower unit there. Tilt trim unit there. I might have to come get that tilt trim unit. That right there is what they call a... I think it's called U.S. Marine. It's a force outboard. Got electric starter on it even. Over there we got some, well that one's a Suzuki I can tell. Or, no, it could be a Nissan. That's a Suzuki definitely. And I don't know what that is over there. Here's a cowling, nice Yamaha cowling. But yeah, there's another nice tilt trim unit for a 70 Yamaha. Sure is. Got some good coils and everything on this one. <clears throat> oh, look at that tiller shift. What would that set you back? Yeah, what would that cost you? Is that? It's the breather. Nice set of triplet carbs there. Nice key switch. I need to come out here on a little bit nicer day and grab all this stuff. It don't have the power tilt trim, it just has that tilt assist, I think. But that one's got it though. Some good stuff on this one. Hell, it even turns over. Probably wouldn't even take too much to get her going. You never know. You never know. Chrysler 20 in there somewhere. But I don't see it. But here's your commercial model. Evan Rude laying in there. Big old Mercury's. Yamaha bonnets.
A lot of good stuff on that one guy right there. And there's another one. Another commercial right there. Good propeller. There's a hydraulic steering system right there. Good stuff. The Tower of Power. There she lays. Pretty rough. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two Towers of Powers. And big V6 Yammy. And I'm not sure what that one is right there. Yeah. That looks like a big old force or something, but I know it ain't because it's four stroke. E Tech seen better days. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. I'm going to dig around in there a little bit, see if I can see that force. 20. I'd be interested in that one. everywhere the job is not done until the paperwork gets done you want to stand well I checked this little two-stroker generator out it has spark that I can see and I sprayed a little tri-flow in yon cylinders and I'm just gonna see if it pops over this is some kind of jury rig throttle I'll have to figure that out I drained a little of the gas I can't tell if it's got water in it, but it looks cloudy and stuff, so I'm guessing the fuel's contaminated. I got the fuel off right now, so none's getting in there, so that should be just tri-flow. Let's see if she'll pop. Yep, she did. She popped a little. So I'm going to continue to drain the fuel out of this thing. First thing, I'm going to turn it right upside down, see how much I can get out. But yeah, my guess is the gas is probably as old as the generator. Look at that, hardly nothing comes out. Oh yeah, it's full of water. Yeah. You're not going to be able to tell it, but I just spilt a little in the, one of these little catch things on my little box here. You see them bubbles all that? You see that? You can tell there's water in that. So let me drain it and I'll be back.
I don't. Say hello, Jay. You're on film. Hello. This is Jay, everybody. In YouTube land. And I got somebody else City calling. Cab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what you always say? Uh, tell a friend. Tell your friends. Yeah. What else we got coming? Hey there. Hey, George. What's up? Not much. Hello. I'm getting busy. I'm going to sign off for a minute. You know what that means, right? It means that that little cutie right there now belongs to me. Uh, whoops. And she needs some cleaning. Boy, that stands not much. All right, so. There was nothing wrong with that little generator. Um, dirty spark plug. Most likely all filed out because of the amount of water that was in the fuel. So I drained the fuel tank, I rinsed it out with fresh gas, I cleaned up the spark plug, I took my spark checker, made sure I had spark, both with the ignition switch in the run position, and then I made sure I lost spark when I put it to the off position. And after I cleaned things up, I put a fresh mix, 50 to 1 in it, and voila! They don't run on get on water. They don't run on water. No matter how many times, how many pools, how many, they have not got to that engine yet that allows you to dump water all in your fuel tank, and it's going to run fine. I'm looking at a pretty bald eagle up here. There he goes. Um, yeah, so it was full of water and yuck and everything, so I just cleaned all that out and cleaned things up a little bit. He had a wire rigged to the governor arm to raise the RPMs on it. I cut that off. Right there on the side is a nice little Phillips screw with a diagram shows in it, show it increase the RPMs. It's got a little piston and all. So, um, I raised the RPMs to about what I think it should be. Um, it'll run power tools and so forth. It starts easy, runs good, and now... It's mine. I haven't even took the hood off this. I'm liable to pop the bonnet off and there ain't nothing in there. Nah. It's in there. It's dirty, it's salty, it's going to need a little love, but it's getting a little late, and uh, it was raining earlier. It looks like it cleared up, so I'm hoping tomorrow will be a little bit nicer day and I can get a little more done, but uh, this video's getting a little bit long, and so you know, that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Inside Outboards with Cody Bass.